No, I'm good. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we, we magnify you, we glorify you. We thank you that you're in full control, and, you, we, and we thank you, O oh God, that you work us all things after the counsel of your own will. Father God, I pray that the communication of my faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. And Lord, we give your name the glory on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title on tonight's message is, But I Have Prayed for Thee. I love the message is, but I have prayed for thee. We're going to start off in Luke. Very familiar verse of scripture. Luke um, 22, 31. And the Lord said, Amen. Luke 22:31. When you get it, say again. Luke 22:31. That's in the New Testament. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I realized as God was, was, was giving me this is down through the years I've heard when God wants somebody to really get something, he says it twice. Simon's son, Abraham, Abraham. But then I got some, something different from that. Because we actually have two sets of ears. We have a natural set and we have a spiritual set. And so when God says something twice like that, verily, verily, Simon, Simon, Abraham, when he says stuff like that, He's addressing both ears. The first one hits your natural ear, but then that second one hits your spiritual ear. Amen. And it goes down deep. When it hits that spiritual ear, it goes down deep on the inside and gets to your spirit man. So that second Simon got past the, the natural ear of the first Simon so that it would get down into the spiritual ear, into a hidden spiritual place, so it can germinate. Uh-huh. Simon, Simon, it says Satan has desired to have you. Desire. The desire is not just a whim. Desire is not just a small thing. A desire will drive you. The carnal man will desire a woman. When you have a desire for something, you go out of your way to get it. You put forth a lot of effort for it because it's a desire. It's something that's important to you. And Satan's desire was that he would have Peter. That's, that's what he wanted. That's what he was going to go out of his way to get. This thing had all his attention because when you desire something, it has your attention. Amen? Mm -hmm. Your mind is captivated by, by that thing that you desire. Our children have our attention. We want to make sure that they're all right. They're important to us. They have our attention. And our desire is for them to be all right. It says, now, and not, it did just say that the devil desired to have Peter, almost like a man would want to have a woman, but his desire was for a reason. He didn't just desire, it wasn't just a lust, but he had something else behind it. He had, a, he had a, another, he had a motivation behind that. And his motivation was that he desired to have him 
that he might sift him as we. That was his whole focus, was to sift. He wanted to sift Peter. He desires Peter for a reason. Whenever you see that word that after a part of a verse, then that is a, is a purpose word. It's a word of purpose. He desires him that. And the that shows the purpose that he has. And his that or purpose word is that he wants to sift him like wheat. Now, the concept of sifting wheat is kind of foreign to us because we have this newfangled wheat. Oh, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody praying. Huh? We don't have a wheat sifter at home or a sieve, and we don't have to take, take the wheat and pour it through the sieve and get the lumps and stuff out. It's already pre-sifted. Pre it's not like it was in the old days. When you buy your wheat, the lumps and stuff are out. Come on, it's powdery and smooth. It's been, it's been sifted already. But old school, when you got your wheat, you had to take a sieve, and then you had to pour that wheat with all the clumps and stuff in it through the sieve. And the purpose of that, uh, the definition of sifting wheat it's, it's a loose, or any substance, it's a loose or powdery su substance that you put through a seed as to remove lumps or large particles. They used to do that to wheat to get the lumps and stuff out. Like I said, we don't sift wheat today because we got pre-sifted wheat. Sift in the Greek means to shake. Huh? So the devil wanted to shake Peter up. Now, Thayer's definition says that figuratively, that it means to shake, but that figuratively, it means that by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me say it again. Thayer said that sifting figurative, figuratively by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. So the purpose of the sift is to, is to agitate you. Oh, wait a minute. It's the, the purpose is to agitate you to the point that it overthrows your faith. Somebody say sift it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that he even realized that Satan had desired to have him. See, I think that 31 and 32 were both kind of shocks to, to, to Peter. I don't think that Peter really realized that Satan had desired to have him, that he might sift to this week. Um, and they had just gotten through talking about who was the greatest and all that, all that kind of stuff. And who will eat and drink in the kingdom and all that. But and now that you mentioned it, I can see how that may have triggered it. Because what Jesus may have been saying was that this scenario was nothing but the devil trying to sift you as y'all are arguing about who's going to be the greatest. Now, so what the sifting does as I mentioned, it shakes, it agitates, so that looks negative. What the devil does is he, he comes to sift us when we're at our lowest point. He comes to shake us, he'll send situations to shake us up and to agitate us. Amen? Put you through a sieve in the spirit. Shake, agitate, get the lumps out of you. Come on. The devil uses situations to shake us up. The devil is always looking for a door so that he may sift you as we. Always waiting for an opportunity. Amen. The Greek word for sift is sanazo, and as I mentioned, it means to shake or agitate or to put through a small space. 
the, the word desire is a long word in the Greek. It is iahe tomeha. And Thayer says that that word desire means to beg, to beg for. So when Satan, when it says here that Satan desired Peter, in the originality of the text, what he was saying, he was begging God for Peter. Come on. It's, it says to beg for oneself, but get this, to be given up from the power of another to you. Let me say it again. That word means, Thayer said that that word means to beg for oneself. So the devil wanted Peter for himself. To beg for oneself to be given up from the power of another to him. So the devil was actually begging God, listen to this, according to this Greek definition, to uncover Peter. Oh, come on. He's saying he wants, he's begging you. He's begging for himself, for Peter to be given up from his power, from God's power, to the devil's power. Oh, come on, somebody. So that's what happens when the devil has a desire. He's trying to, he wants to use, let circumstances and depression and all kind of stuff pull you out of God's hands. Bless you. Pull you out of God's hands into his. God bless you, woman of God. We are in Luke 22, 31 and 32, where it says, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have thee, that he might sift you as we. Luke 22, 31, 32. And I, I, I had just talked a little bit before you got here that um, it starts off saying Simon, Simon, says, says, says Simon twice there at the very beginning of the verse. And the reason why I believe uh, Jesus said that to him like that is because we have two ears. We have a, a spiritual ear and a natural ear. So the first Simon hit the natural ear, but the second Simon hit the spiritual ear. And when, it, and when that second Simon went down into the spirit realm, it went down into his spirit so it, could be, so it could, could be germinated and cultivated by the Lord. Now, it's 31 and 32, Luke uh, 22, 31 and 32. So, so the second Simon hit the spiritual realm. It says, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have thee. And I was just teaching when you came in that, and it goes on to say, that he may sift you as we. So, and I was teaching that that word desire, a desire is not a whim. It's not a love for something that's not important to you. When you desire something, that's important. Amen. A desire will drive you. You'll go the extra mile to get something when you desire it. You put forth effort for it when you desire. What you desire has your attention. Our children have our attention. And we care about what they desire. We desire for them to be happy. So that means that the devil was driven to get Peter. It was important to him. And it goes on to say, he desired him and there's a that behind it. He, desi he desired to have him that. Whenever you see the word that in scripture, that's a purpose word. That tells you the purpose behind the thing. So he wants him so that he might sift him as we. I was just teaching a little while ago that uh, we don't, we can't really teach this real good in this newfangled economy that we have because our wheat is already precepted. Huh? We don't, we don't buy the wheat, then take a seed, a sieve and pour it through the sieve and get the lumps. It's precepted already. Newfangled stuff. But see, old school, they had to sift the wheat. Amen? 
And as I mentioned, when the, the, the purpose of sifting is to take a loose or powdery substance through a sieve as to remove the lumps or the large particles. They used to do that to the wheat to get the lumps out. And I was teaching that that word desire in the Greek there said that it means figuratively by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. So when we talk about Peter being sifted by the devil or the devil desiring to sift Peter, what that's really saying is he wants to shake Peter up. Because that word means by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. So what the devil does is he'll lose some situations and bad stuff in our lives to shake us up. Come on. Amen. To shake us up because he's trying to sift. Come on. He's trying to shake us up to sift. The devil is always looking for a door to open against the saints. Why? That he may sift us as we. Hallelujah. But I, I got good news for you. The devil is a pawn of God. Huh? The devil, God has been using the devil since before time started. Always doing, doing stuff. Uh, God moved on the, on the enemy to have the king put the, have the census, but that census <laughs> drew, drew uh, Jesus, mother and father, to Bethlehem where he was born. The God used the devil. Does it all the time. Devil, devil's so stupid, he, he getting mad and be trying to do things for against us. But let's look at scripture. A scripture. Let's go to Genesis 50. 50 and 20. Genesis 50 and 20. Very well known scripture. This is Joseph talking. Genesis 50 and 20. That's an old testament. When you get it, say, I got it. Now, keep in mind, what I'm trying to show here is that the devil is trying to sift you, thinking that shaking you up and all this kind of stuff and agitating you is going to do bad stuff to you. But let me show you how God uses the dumb devil one more time. Genesis 50 and 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. This is Joseph talking to his brothers. He says, see, see you, you sold me into slavery. You did all this stuff and you meant evil against me. But what you actually did, you put me in a position to save the world. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> come on. He said, you put me in a, in a position to save much people alive. Because he was the one that, that interpreted the, the, the dream about the fat cows and the skinny cows. And he was the one <coughs> that during the time of plenty, he put aside the food for the time of famine. And the whole world, had to, uh, the known world at that time, had to come to Joseph. Come on, somebody. So they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Now let me tell you something about sifting that God told me, showed me about sifting. The purpose of the sifting is to get the lumps out, right? The purpose of the sifting, because you cannot use the wheat like you want to use it unless it's sifted. Unless you got all the lumps and bumps out of it. So what sifting actually does for the wheat is it makes it usable. Oh, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody praying. The, the sifting actually makes the wheat better. Ain't nobody saying amen. amen. I said the sifting actually <laughs> makes the wheat better. We always look at the concept of the sift, and the dumb devil did the same thing. I'm in Luke 22, 31, 32. 
The dumb devil said, I'm going to sift Peter like a week because I want to try and get to him and shake him up and agitate him. But then the God dropped in my spirit that, yeah, but sifting is good for the wheat. Ain't nobody saying amen. amen. You can't use the wheat unless it's sifted. Somebody went, uh, come on, somebody. Sure. Sifting helps the wheat. Sifting makes the wheat better. Amen. I submit unto you, the devil came and Peter to sift him. But can I preach the sift just makes us better. Ah, sure, excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to holler like that. The <laughs> sift makes you better because the sift, wait, doesn't the sifting make the wheat usable? Huh? Doesn't the sift make the wheat better? Can I preach? So the devil wanted to sift Peter, but God turned it around because the sift makes you better. Hey, come on, both sides. Come on, somebody. The agitation and the shaking that the sifting does, how does it make it better, Ted? I'm glad you asked that question because it makes you depend on God. Ain't nobody praying with me. Hallelujah. It, wait, wait, honey. It, it makes you run to your prayer closet when you get sifted. Oh, ain't nobody praying with me. I said it makes you run to your prayer closet when the sift hits. And the devil had no idea. The devil meant it for evil. I feel my preacher trying to come. I'm sorry. But God meant it for good. Simon, Simon. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we. But I just want to encourage somebody. This is going to be an encouraging teaching. I want to encourage somebody and let you all know that the sift is good for you. See, we always think, oh, the sifting is, yeah. And the devil was thinking along those lines, too, that, that the sift was going to hurt people. But when you look at the purpose of the sifting is to make the wheat better so you can use it. I submit unto you that when the devil comes to sift you, God turns it around. The devil meet, means, means to sift for evil, but God means it for good. Okarabosah, hallelujah. God meant it for good. God uses the devil all the time. 32nd verse, you see a change. Can somebody read Luke uh, 22, 32 for me, please? Bless you. But I have prayed for thee. Uh huh. That thou faith fail not. Mm hmm. And when thou art converted, from 31 to 32, there's a big change. God say, okay, in the, in the 31st verse, we see what the devil wants to do. Huh? Yeah. He wants to sift. He desires. But God say, okay, but now, now it's my turn. Ain't nobody praying. God say in 32, you're going to see what I'm going to do about what he's going to do. Hmm? But I have prayed. It sounds bad in 31, but I got good news for you. Not only did, did he pray for Peter, he prayed for you. Yeah, sure, Lord, excuse me. I got another quickening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. He prayed for you, and I'm going to show you the scripture. Now, he, he told Peter, I have prayed for you. He didn't say, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I've already prayed for you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Wait a minute. Isn't it wonderful that the God of the universe... Ain't nobody praying. <laughs> Did the prayer. Because see, fuck, I tell you that. But, oh, you ask folk to pray for you. Uh -huh, and they say, oh, I pray for you. And they don't. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody saying amen. amen. They'll forget. Yeah. Oh, they'll get busy. Mm -hmm. But isn't it wonderful that the God that changeth not is the one who did the praying? Good God of mercy. Mm-hmm. 31st verse, we see what the devil going to do. But in the, but in the 32nd verse, we see what God's doing. Isn't it wonderful? God just said, but I pray for you. <laughs> so, but, anybody, but you got to remember, this is the God of the universe talking here, saying that he prayed for you. Can I preach? See, when God prayed for you, he cheated a little bit. Because he God, and so he makes... Let us say what? Because he God. <laughs> so if he going to pray it, it's got to happen. Ain't nobody praying. Oh, come on. <laughs> 
Because this, this ain't Ted praying or Linda praying. This God praying. That's why I say, honey, that's why I say he cheated a little bit. Because he got all power for us. Excuse me, power. So, he prays for you. In the 32nd verse, he, he tells you what he's going to do. Like I said, it's not your mama praying. It's not the intercessor praying. It's the God of the universe praying. And he didn't just pray for Peter. He prayed for you. And I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. Hallelujah. Now, what I want to let you know is that God shows you his mindset in 32. God always has a plan for the devil. The Bible says, I think it's John 10, 10. It says, the thief cometh not, right, but to steal, kill, and destroy, period. Is that, is that the way it is, period? No, it don't. But I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Isn't it wonderful that God always has an answer for the devil? Ain't nobody praying. Isn't it wonderful that God always has a plan to deal with him for what he's going to do in our behalf? Yeah, the, the devil's coming, but God said, yeah, but I come, I'm coming too. <laughs> uh, come on. The, the devil's coming to kill, steal, and destroy, but I'm coming that you might, there's that word again, that, that you might have life and that more what? Abundantly. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Now, he told Pete, he said that he prayed for you. Um, now, somebody give me John 17, 9 through 11. Because somebody may say, what did you have to let? He prayed for us. I don't see nowhere, no place where he prayed for us. He prayed for Peter, but I ain't Peter. Peter gone. <laughs> Come on, somebody. What about me, Ted? St. John 17, 9 through 11. Somebody read that for us, please. Hold it. That's Jesus talking. That's us. Are y'all with me? Amen. God is saying he prayed for us. Keep, keep on going for me. Okay. Well, let me start over. Okay. I pray for them. Mm -hmm. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Mm -hmm. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. Mm -hmm. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect me by the power of your name. Mm -hmm. The name you give me so that they may be one as we are one. Hold it right there. Thank you. Wait a minute. He prayed for you. And it says here that he prayed that we might be one with the Father, just like Jesus. Is. Oh, good God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty good prayer. He said that you all, that we may be one with the Father, just like Jesus is one with the Father. So he prayed for you. Now, wait a minute. Because what God knew was he knew that we were going to go through stuff. Come on. He knew sometimes we, we wouldn't have enough. He knew sometimes the kids might act up. Come on. Wait, he knew sometimes the job might act up. Ain't nobody praying. He knew that we were going to have problems, so he prayed for you. Hmm? Wait, he prayed for you before there was a you. Wait, wait a minute. John 17 was way before we were born. <laughs> Come on. Wait a minute. So he prayed for you before there was a you. Come on. Isn't that wonderful? He prayed for you before the fact. He prayed that you would be one with the Father. And there's power wrapped up in there. Amen. If you're going to be one with the master of the universe, that's pretty good. He prayed for you. Hallelujah. He prayed for you before there was a you. And his prayer from way back there in John 17 is still out there. Oh, hallelujah. Because, the, because God's prayer transcends time. Come on. So he prayed that in, you know, 2,000 years ago, but it's still working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's God's the one that, that prayed. Amen. And his prayers transcend time. Because he said, I change it not. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. And, and you know what's nice about it? God ain't like people. Hmm? He prayed the prayer before there was a you, but then when, when we came here, before we got saved and messed up, ain't nobody praying. He didn't take the prayer back. Oh, come on. Because if, if it had been us, and, huh, and, and, we, and we wanted to help somebody, pray somebody, and, and they mess up, oh, oh, ain't nobody praying. <laughs> huh? They just take the prayer back. But God is such a wonderful, loving God that he knew you were going to mess up. Ain't nobody praying. Because, see, he prayed this prayer not only before you got here, but before you, you were saved. Hallelujah. In the bed with somebody you wasn't married to, but he didn't take his prayer back. Come on! Come on! Huh? Lying, cheating, cussing, but he didn't take his prayer back. Glory. He prayed for you. I don't know about you, but I like that. So there's a prayer out there for you from John 17 now to empower you to make it through. It's not stale. The prayer ain't stale because it's still working right now. Hmm? Through, huh? Because when we pray, we connect with God and we are what? One with him. Oh, come on, somebody. It's still out there. He didn't take his prayer back. I like that because he prayed for us and he's the God of the universe so he knew that we were going to mess up. He knew how naughty we were going to be before we got saved. Come on somebody. But he prayed for you before you got saved and before you were even here. The title of the message is but I have prayed for thee. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, glory. Because, see, most of us thought that he was just talking about Peter, but I took you to John 17 to show you that God prayed for you. He prayed for the marshals. Isn't that wonderful? He prayed for every single one of y'all. He prayed for all of us before, huh? wait, before the marshals were even marshals, before y'all even got here. Come on, somebody. He prayed for you. But, I have prayed for you. Things might not look good, but I feel my preacher trying to come now. But I have prayed for you. Might feel like giving up, but I have prayed for you. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But I have prayed for you. God Almighty. Hope that encouraged somebody. Amen. Linda's smiling. I know that must be pretty good. Linda smile at me. Glory! <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm glad that that blessed you, woman, woman of God. Are there any questions? Devil want to sift you, but God turns it around because the sift makes the wheat better. Come on. The sift makes the wheat usable. So when the devil tries to sift you, he's just working for God to make you better. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we magnify you, we glorify you, we give you the glory that's due your name. Lord God, we worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, I pray as your word says, that the communication of my faith has become effectual by the acknowledging of, of every good thing that is in us that is in Christ. I pray for those all under the sound of my voice. I speak blessing. Lord, your word says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. And Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And remember, God has prayed for you. Hallelujah.